Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Nintendo Switch, PS3, GameCube, and Wii, and more. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, we're talking about GameCube and Wii emulation with Dolphin. And as a brief history lesson here, a long while back, Dolphin announced that they wanted to launch on Steam. A lot of people, myself included, were excited about this one. Everything seemed to be going great, and then all of a sudden, things were not going great. So the initial message from the Dolphin team was that Nintendo issued a DMCA to get them off Steam. And then it turned out that wasn't exactly the case. The Dolphin team decided to clarify that quickly after. Anyways, we talked at length about this stuff in previous videos, and today Dolphin clarified the situation even more. I'll drop a link to this article in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. We're just going over it at a high level. So to clarify and baseline, Nintendo did not send Dolphin or Valve a DMCA. What happened was Valve reached out to Nintendo to see if they were cool with having Dolphin on Steam, and obviously Nintendo was not. So afterwards, Nintendo got their lawyers together, issued a statement, sent it to Valve requesting that Valve prevents Dolphin from launching on Steam. They used some strong legal language, and they cited the DMCA, but they did not issue a DMCA. And then Valve said to Dolphin, if you want Dolphin on Steam, you have to get Nintendo's approval first which really doesn't seem realistic, feasible, or even possible given Nintendo's stance on emulation. Now, Dolphin did take Nintendo's wording seriously, and they did seek some legal help on the matter. One of the big sticking points here was the use of the common key. The Wii common key is Nintendo proprietary information, and Dolphin was using that to decrypt Wii games. And that seemed to be a big sticking point. However, it may actually not be that big. If you are curious, apparently this is Nintendo's official statement. We and Nintendo GameCube game files, or ROMs, are encrypted using proprietary cryptographic keys. The Dolphin emulator operates by incorporating these cryptographic keys without Nintendo's authorization. Thus, the use of Dolphin emulator unlawfully circumvents a technological measure that effectively controls access to a work protected under the Copyright Act. They used unlawful and not illegal, which is interesting. Now from Dolphin's side of things, armed with legal information apparently really minimizes Nintendo's statement. Dolphin says, considering that only a small fraction of what we do involves circumvention, we think that the claim that we are primarily for circumvention is a reach. We do not believe this angle would be successful in a U.S. courtroom. And they then go on to talk about DMCA exemptions, and this is huge. They say these exemptions are powerful and widely in their favor, and I would tend to agree here. A particular note for Dolphin is the reverse engineering exemption. A person may develop and employ technological means to circumvent a technological measure, or to circumvent protection afforded by a technological measure. That is massive, and that completely contradicts Nintendo's statement. They also say here to all the armchair lawyers out there, the letter to Valve did not make any claims that we were violating a U.S. copyright by including the Wii Common Key, as a short string of entirely random letters and numbers generated by a machine is not copyrightable. Although Dolphin does not believe they are in any legal danger whatsoever and appears to believe that they would beat Nintendo in court, they're not going to take the matters further, and they're not going to try to get Dolphin on Steam. But they are going to continue on with Dolphin, and they're not stopping. In fact, they are working on a big picture GUI that can be used directly with a controller. So as for my final thoughts on the matter, big hat tips to the Dolphin team for doing some really awesome legal research and finding out some information I think will really help out the emulation community as a whole. And as for Dolphin on Steam, you know what? Dolphin is fine on its own. It doesn't need Steam. It's absolutely A-OK. -okay. I'm glad they're still developing this. I'm glad they're still developing brand new features, and I can't wait to see what they do next. Let me know your thoughts about this whole thing in the comments below. But moving on, and next up, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation with Ryujinx, and Ryujinx got an update you might be interested in. As for version 1.1.965, it may improve support for third-party Nintendo Switch controllers. It fixes Xbox One controllers from powering off when opening from the settings menu, and it fixes Xbox One controllers from randomly not receiving inputs. 
So input improvements, in my opinion, are great things. And speaking about great things, next up we're talking about PlayStation 3 emulation with RPCS3. They've added a brand new option to automatically pause emulation when the emulator window is not focused. So if you click off the emulator, it'll automatically pause for you. And this is on the latest and greatest version of RPCS3, which you can pick up directly from their website. Next up, we're talking about FPGA. And if you've got an FPGA device, or two or three, you might like this news. Apparently, Dreamcast FPGA is in development, although it's going to take a while before it's actually finished. It's in its early stages right now, and they're currently speculating it's going to take about three years to get up and running fine. I'll drop a link to this YouTube video in the description below. There's a lot of very helpful information there and I do recommend checking it out. Next up, we're talking about the newly announced Retroid Pocket 2S and this news comes courtesy of Retroid Handhelds. If you've got something new like the Retroid Pocket Flip, you really don't have to worry here. The Retroid Pocket 2S is gonna feature a Unisoc T610 so it won't be as powerful but it will have more performance and a better looking screen and performing touch screen than the original 2 Plus. It's launching for a price of 99 bucks on July 25th, so pretty soon. On a quick side note, after they revealed the price and specs on this thing, the 2S has been mostly met with a warm reception. And I say mostly because a lot of people are still upset that Retroid is releasing a brand new system month after month after month. In my opinion here, they should slow down and focus on quality as opposed to quantity, but what do I know? Let me know your thoughts about the Retroid Pocket 2S in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? And speaking about quality, next up here we're talking about Gran Turismo, the movie based on the game. This one could go either way here. Let me know your thoughts after seeing the trailer in the comments below. Is it interesting? Is it not interesting? Is it going to be great or is it going to be a trash fire? But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. All stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos, don't tempt fate, save your state.